liver cirrhosis or any kind of cirrhosis, which we talked about last time, right? I talked about the complications. You know, alcohol can cause the hepatitis C, all these autoimmune diseases, is because the liver processes estrogen. And if the, remember, cholesterol is usually breaking down into bile salts, which is stored in the, as you know, inside your uh, gallbladder. Now, estrogen can get through, right? That's a big problem. It's a really serious problem because now you don't have estrogen. Estrogen is low. I'll just use E2. It's very low. I mean, it's actually very high, I meant to say, because it's not being processed and breaking because it's a steroid. Now, this estrogen is going to stimulate the breast tissue and cause hyperperforation of your breast duct, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, you develop gynecomastia. Another problem is testicular atrophy. Right? Testosterone. Basically, you need testosterone for your, for your uh, which is supposed to be produced by your testes. However, men develop low testosterone from having uh, liver disease just because what? You need those binding hormones to carry the testosterone to the spot. This is steroid. Remember? Steroids are lipid soluble, not water soluble. They can't go into the bloodstream. So they need to bind to some kind of you know, testosterone binding protein. Although they're produced by um, the Sertoli cells, but however, you still need a little bit of these proteins in the blood. And if they can't get to where they got to get to, you got a problem. Impotence, right? Palmar erythema. What is that? You look at the patient's hand. Literally, you look at the hand and it's red. It's not because, you know, they're, they're hot or anything. The problem is the estrogen. Estrogen causes vasodilatation. And all the, the, the materials of the hands, literally vasodilatation, you can see it really red. Another um, finding that you see in patients that have chronic liver failure is because they develop this thing called a, a spider angio angiomas. And they literally, they have a central spot and kind of radiates out. It literally looks like a spider. I've seen this. It's pretty interesting when you see it. Uh, and the patients start to develop it. It's literally, that's all coming from the estrogen. Now, another complication which we talk about, I kind of mentioned in the last video, was hemorrhoids, right? The patient will be telling you, Doc, I go to the bathroom, and then when I take it, and, you know, when I wipe, I see blood. And you do a rectal exam, you see this dilated, like, those are the inferior rectal veins. They literally dilate out just like you saw. It's the same pathophysiology. That's why you have to understand this anatom anatomic uh, point of view. That's where hemorrhoids are coming from. These veins can't drain back into the liver. It's tough. They can't. They try to do it, not to just sit back down. Copy Medusa. Basically, if it gets really bad enough, you might be able to see um, para umbilical vein dilation, visit dilatation. And literally, you'll be able to see right on their belly. You'll be able to see like this, they call it Capric Medusa because it's, you know, it looks like the head of a Medusa. And these veins are tortured. It's literally, you can see it. It's, it's a scary thing if you ever see this thing. So those are actually the classic signs of um, portal hypertension, just due to cirrhosis. We, I, I gave you the mnemonic A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H uh, of things that actually can cause uh, liver cirrhosis in the long run, right? Uh, just check out one of the videos I made also. Uh, it kind of talked and hinted a little bit about that. But today we are focusing on uh, portal hypertension and kind of like uh, the side effects you're going to be able to see with uh, liver uh, dysfunction. Now, on my right, you have the mnemonic, beautiful mnemonic. I'm just going to go through it because, you know, sometimes students memorize things. It, I kind of hate memorization if you don't know, right? It, 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 it sucks because you memorize it, you don't know why you memorize it, and you get pimped and you're like, just forgot. So I'm just kind of going to go down the list. It's called AC9H. I don't know if you can see this very clearly. A as in apple, C as in cat, 9 and H's. So the first one we talk about ascites already, so I'm not even going to waste time on that. Coagulopathy, right? The liver makes all your clotting factors. If the liver is damaged, you can't make any clotting factors. Guess what's going to be elevated? Your PT is going to be elevated, your PTT is going to be elevated, or your INR. That's what you expect to see. Hypoalbuminemia, albuminemia, right? I told you the liver's not working. If it's not working, you can't make albumin, right? You check the albumin, you do it like, you know, um, a BMP and a CBC. You 
check for liver function, test, run all this test, and check for albumin level, and lo and behold, it's low. Hyperammonemia, that's extremely important. That's another complication of you know, portal hypertension. You know what? The ammonia level is high. I know I'm going to scare you right now, but remember, ammonia in the body comes from what? Proteins. You eat your little steak, chicken, everybody's excited. But what happens, for, I know, this is going to drive you nuts, but do not worry about it. I don't want you to focus too much on this, but just real quick, remember this. This is amino acid. When your body metabolizes amino acid, it chops off this ammonia, ammonium group and turns into ammonia. Literally, it used to rest for whatever it needs to use it for, and this ammonia has to be processed because it's a toxic substance. The body cannot use ammonia. So what the body does is shunts this ammonia, right? This ammonia is going to be shunt through the what? The ammonium cycle. The urea cycle. Literally, ammonia has to go. Remember the whole, you know, biochemical path, which I'm not going to go into, right? The carbonyl phosphate, that kind of, I know, I know. It drives me crazy too, but yeah, it's medicine, right? Uh, if you got, you got enough of boards. The ammonia now, since the liver can't do that. Because that's where the urea is made. Remember, ammonia is passed into urea. Instead of making urea now, it backs up, and now the ammonia goes to the bloodstream. You measure the ammonia level, it's high. Ridiculous. It's crazy. But the problem is this ammonia can go to your brain. It goes to your brain, it messes you up. So we call that what? Empatic encephalopathy. How do you know that? You literally go into the patient and tell Mr. Whoever it is, let's call him John. Mr. John. I want you to stand up. They stand up and you tell them, put your hands up and just try to like uh, face me as you start to make a stop sign. And you know what they do? They do this. And you're like, oh, Doc, I can't keep my hands up. That's called asterisis. Right? I'm just going to write that on the board just for people uh, to see what that means. Asterisis. These people are mentally confused. They're, you know, they're kind of making stuff up because the ammonia is going to their basal ganglia, it's going to the brain because it's diffusing because it has nowhere to go. Uh, we treat that, basically you could give them lactulose. And lactulose, what it actually does is the bacteria inside your gut, we actually convert lactulose into hydrogen ions. And these hydrogen ions can bind to the ammonia to form ammonium. And now you can basically poop it out. Pretty cool, right? Genius. Exactly. So, we've talked about that. That's another complication. There's something called hepatorenal syndrome where actually your arm, um, the, the kidney doesn't get enough blood flow, right? Remember, this is going to cause hypertension. Like, this is hypertension. The fluid is getting out. If you start to lose intravascular fluid, what happens is your blood pressure can go down. If the blood pressure goes down, the kidney doesn't get anything. So your BUA, your creatinine will be elevated, uh, and that's how you, and again, it really be severe. Hypoglycemia. Surprise? Oh, I'm not. Guess what? The liver does its job. When you eat, remember, it does, it stores your glucose as glycogen. It's because when it's working, you gotta store it as glycogen. But when it's not working, it doesn't matter how much you eat. Because once you're done eating, you can't maintain your blood glucose anymore. Because remember, then you wake up in the morning, you grab a cup of breakfast, you run out, and you don't eat something until like 7 in the evening. And you're like, oh, you know, I'm hungry a little bit. But this time, your liver is what's doing the job. You know, shutting that glucose, slowly converting that glucose, uh, uh, glycogen back into glucose. So did you develop hypoglycemia? Hyperbilirubin, hyperbilirubin, right? High bilirubin. Where's that coming from? Realize this is all what the liver does for a living. I know, right? It sounds funny. Like, this guy must be really important. Yeah, it is. I hope you start to realize it's important in the liver. So, the liver process bilirubin. The bilirubin is coming from what? Red blood cells. Breakdown of hemoglobin, right? The hemoglobin comes out. It's broken down to pieces. Bilirubin is the byproduct. I'm not going to go into the pathway. That would drive you crazy. But the bilirubin has to help on what? Albumin. Huh? Albumin is gone. 